Uh, today, we're going to hear from Peter Lindstrom, who works for Clean Energy Resource Teams. As you can see from his slide, he's our manager of public sector and community engagement. And this is part of a series of, on the left, you see that little round yellow logo, CERT's Community Energy Ambassador Program, uh, which you're going to be learning more about. But today, we're going to hear specifically about paying for your project for residents from Pete. So go ahead, take it away, Peter. If you do have questions, so sorry, please write them in the chat, but let's not interrupt Pete till he's done with his presentation. Thanks. Sorry. Go okay. ahead, Pete. Normally, you can interrupt me anytime you want, but uh, yeah, we'll just uh, we'll swing right into it. Uh, thank you, everybody, for joining us. It's a thrill to present on this topic today, and this topic is one of the most frequently asked questions that we get at CERTs. Throughout my time at CERTS, folks are really motivated on doing an energy efficiency project or a renewable project, but gosh, they're just not sure how to pay for it, how to actually get it done. Uh, and the good news is there's a lot of new incentives, uh, both at the state level, level, uh, federal level, utility level, and more to help homeowners and other entities get these projects across the finish line. So let's dive right into it. All right, well, before we dive right into it, I just wanna do the uh, customary thing of saying who we are. We are the clean energy resource teams and we have a really straightforward mission to help communities do clean energy projects all across the state. Uh, if uh, you want to be more energy efficient, if you want to use renewable energy, then folks are turning to CERTs uh, for technical assistance to help them get across the finish line. So this may be homeowners, this could be businesses, could be nonprofits, uh, farmers, you name it. You want to be more energy efficient or use uh, things like solar, you can you can find the answer at the clean energy resource teams. So we're we're a bit of a unique organization in that we're a partnership organization made up of four partners. One is the Southwest Regional Development Commission down in the uh, southwest part of the state in Slayton. We have a nonprofit in the Twin Cities, the Great Plains Institute. The uh, state of Minnesota is a partner of CERTS. We work very closely with the Department of Commerce. And then last but not least, where we are based, our world headquarters on the St. Paul campus of the University of Minnesota, our fourth and final partner, the Regional Sustainable Development Partnerships. All right, so here's uh, uh, what I plan on talking about for the next 20 minutes or so. Uh, we're going to uh, dive into tax credits and deductions, energy audits, some common financing tools, some uh, loans specific to solar, tax credits, rebates, and then just, just a real high level on some non-residential financing opportunities as well. All right. Well, just a bit of a 101, uh, a refresher, you know, we, sometimes we throw around these terms and, and I know for myself, I get a little tangled up on uh, what's the difference between all of these different things. And so a tax credit, uh, just a, a dollar for dollar reduction in the taxes that you owe. You get a tax credit for $100, you owe $100 less in taxes. Tax deduction, a little bit different. Uh, that reduces the uh, amount you are taxed. Um, and it, it, so it reduces your, your tax liability. Um, and then uh, rebates, you know, th these could be point of sale rebates. Um, they could be uh, a, a check uh, that you receive at some point later. Um, or a direct deposit from your local utility or the state or the, or the feds. Sometimes you can get even, even all three. All right. You know, 
almost every time my phone rings and 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 uh, someone asks the question, gosh, where do I start? The answer more often than not is get an energy audit. No matter if you're a homeowner, a business, a farm, uh, getting that energy audit is just a great baseline uh, to know what to do uh, for your project. And the good news is, is that there's a, a tax credit. So you can get for your for your home, you can get $150 tax credit uh, for that home energy audit. This is this is relatively new within the last uh, couple of years. And uh, I always encourage folks to contact their utility first. Their utility oftentimes, not always, but oftentimes provides uh, home energy audits or energy audits for, for businesses or non nonprofits. Uh, so that's always a great place to start. Number one, to learn if, if they provide an audit, but also number two, to learn what sort of rebates or incentives may be available for your project. I'll also say Excel has a great program uh, called the Home Energy Squad really uh, uh, just do a great job uh, for energy audits in Excel territory. And then Minnesota Energy Resources, if, if you're a uh, uh, Minnesota Energy Resource customer for, for gas, uh, then they do home energy audits as well. So that's a great program as well. Just on a, a fairly high level, I wanted to touch on what are some common home financing tools. Um, these aren't just for energy efficiency or, or for solar. Um, these are just common uh, financing tools if you're doing uh, a home improvement. Uh, and I'll also say that cash is king. So if you can save, uh, create a bit of a rainy day fund uh, for these types of improvements, I think that's always the best. Uh, then you don't have to worry about those loan repayments or what have you. That's not always possible, especially for uh, for larger projects. And so we have home improvement loans are, are very common. These are unsecured personal loans offered by banks and, and credit unions, online lenders. And because the, the loans are unsecured, you don't need to use your house as collateral to qualify. And your interest rate and, and qualifications generally depend upon your, your credit score. The good news is these loans do come pretty quickly if you do qualify. Um, you fill out all the paperwork, you can get those funds um, you know, the next day or the next couple of days. Uh, home improvement loans typically have shorter repayment timelines, uh, lower loan amounts, and fewer fees than home equity loans or, or HELOCs, the next thing I wanted to talk about here. For example, most home improvement loans are about uh, 10 or 12 years at the max, while home equity loans have terms that can be significantly longer, uh, 20, 30, 40 years. Um, and uh, so uh, because HELOCs are, uh, that they're secured loans, so they're backed by your home, um, you can qualify for lower interest rates, which is a benefit. Um, and so generally these are for, I, I guess I'd say they're well-suited for longer, uh, larger projects. If you wanna tap into your existing home equity, uh, but don't want a, like a, a revolving credit, which is a, a HELOC, um, you can apply for a home equity loan, which is sometimes referred to as a second mortgage. Uh, though that's a, a, a can be a good option as well. You get a lump sum to help yeah, get that project, or a cash out refinancing. Um, it replaces your current mortgage with a new, larger loan and and gives you a whole new interest rate. Um, and then you get to pocket the difference between your old mortgage and the new loan. And, uh, and use those, those funds for your home improvement project. Minnesota housing, 
uh, state agency, they've got some really gangbuster loans that I wanted to make sure that you're all aware of. Three of them in particular. Uh, uh, first one is a fix up home improvement loan. And uh, these are, um, so I'll say they have a lot of great information online uh, on Minnesota Housing website, including a link to lenders that provide these loans. So there are dozens and dozens of banks, credit unions, community-based organizations that provide the uh, loans that are on the screen that, that you see before you, um, including the fix-up home improvement loan. And this can be for energy efficiency projects, um, but it's much broader than that. So it could be for, um, you know, it could be for energy efficiency, furnace, furnaces, boilers, water heaters, windows, um, insulation, that sort of thing. But it also could be for just almost any sort of home improvement um, that needs to be a, a septic system, bathroom remodel, tree removal, uh, even that, um, et cetera. So the home, the uh, so that's the fix up home improvement loan. The energy loan plus program is, as you might imagine, for energy projects specifically. It's uh, about, I think it's $2,000 up to $30,000 is the maximum amount of, of the loan. And again, just like the fix up home improvement loan, there are dozens of lenders out there, which you can find on the Minnesota Housing website that provide these loans. The maximum term is 20 years at a fixed interest rate. The rehabilitation loan program and emergency and accessibility loan program is an interesting one. Maximum loan $37,500, 15 year term. Uh, and the loan is forgiven if you do not sell your home or if you do not move uh, during the, the uh, term of the loan. It's a forgivable loan. Could be uh, for single family housing, could be for condominiums, manufactured homes, uh, duplexes, triplexes, that sort of thing. Um, and it's for basic home uh, safety, livability, and energy efficiency for the home. So for example, lead paint would, is a qualifying expense, but also uh, um, electrical wiring or emergency furnace uh, or boiler replacement, plumbing repairs, that sort of thing, windows. Um, so again, it's a loan program that is for energy efficiency projects, but but broader for uh, but broader as well. All right, and then there's a couple of uh, uh, loans that I wanted to mention that are specific for uh, for solar projects. One uh, a nonprofit here in the Twin Cities, Center for Energy and Environment, large nonprofit. They have a, a, a wide variety of loan programs. And they are one of the lenders for the Minnesota housing fix up loans and energy related loans, but they also have a, a solar loan as well that's um, quite competitive and uh, a, po a popular option for, for solar loans. And then the other one I wanted to mention is a, a solar loan for three credit unions. Three credit unions came together, Affinity Plus, Blaze Credit Union and the Mayo Employee Federal Credit Union all came together and uh, created what they call CU Green Credit Union Green and uh, for solar projects in particular, uh, fixed interest rates again um, at fairly competitive rates. Obviously, they they change from uh, uh, day to day or regularly changing. Um, Credit rates this morning, I saw one was at about 6%, so uh, fairly competitive. 
at different loan terms, five years, 10 years, 15 years. Uh, so that's worth uh, looking at as well. So those are some different options for loans. Let's talk tax credits. So there's been a tax credit for energy efficiency projects at your home for, for quite a while. Um, it was capped. It was capped at $500 for your lifetime. Oh boy, $500 cap for your lifetime. That's changed thanks to the Inflation Reduction Act, which passed Congress about two years ago. Uh, there's still a cap. Uh, it's $3,000, uh, $3,200 cap, but it's not once in an eternity. It's an annual cap. So it's a 30% tax credit on that energy efficiency project. Uh, and um, there's kind of, uh, I guess, sub caps. Um, so it's it's uh, $1,000, $1,200 for any combination of home energy, um, home uh, uh, envelope improvements. So you think like insulation, windows, doors, electrical upgrades, $1,200 cap there. But uh, if you do uh, a heat pump, heat pump water heater, biomass stove, there's a $2,000 annual cap for this energy efficiency home improvement credit. So all told between this $2,000 uh, air source heat pump uh, cap and then the $1,200 annual cap for other items, $3,200 annual cap um, for this, this tax credit. Okay, there. this is another one that's been on the books for a while, a uh, residential clean energy tax credit. But again, uh, with the change with the Inflation Reduction Act passed a couple of years ago, uh, it set the tax credit at 30%. It had been going up and down. They called it the solar coaster. It was 26% going down to 22%, actually going all the way down to 10%. Now it is set at 30% uh, for the next decade um, or so. And uh, so it um, uh, uh, so it's, it's really something that you can count on. And in addition, um, it said for uh, uh, for storage, energy storage, again, it was has been on books for a while, but it had to be tied into a solar array to get the tax credit. That is no longer the case. You can have standalone energy storage and get a 30% tax credit uh, for that energy storage system up to three kW in capacity. Okay, rebates. These are in the works. I'm gonna talk about two rebate programs. The first one is called Homes. Uh, this is for, for individuals. Um, homeowner Managing Energy Savings Rebates for Homes. And this program is intended to make homes more energy efficient and provide improvements like insulation, air sealing, e efficient heating and cooling, that sort of thing, both for single family homes and for multifamily buildings. It, this one's an interesting one because uh, you can um, uh, use, um, uh, uh, it, it's, a, it's both a, a modeled, or a measured approach. And what I mean by that is um, under the modeled approach, your, the contractor that you select uses modeling software to, deter to determine how much energy you will save with the improvements that you're thinking about making. And using that software, if it shows a 20% energy savings, uh, that you get a $2,000 rebate. If it shows a 35% energy savings, your rebate is doubled 
35% or more energy savings, your rebate is doubled to $4,000. So that's the modeled approach. The measured approach is uh, you know how much energy you are using before the improvements, um, you make the improvements, and then you measure your energy usage afterwards. And again, if you hit that 20% number uh, for energy savings, you get a $2,000 rebate, 35% or more, $4,000 rebate. And these dollar amounts are doubled for low and moderate income households. So that's the home rebates program. And this is the, the here rebates uh, or home electrification and appliance rebate program. Uh, this is for homeowners and renters, specifically uh, low and, and moderate income. The other one, uh, anybody can tap into that one. Um, you, you don't need to be income qualified. This one you do uh, for low and um, and um, uh, low and moderate income individuals as as measured by the area median income, which I'll talk about in a minute. Both of these uh, both of these rebate programs will be rolled out early 2025 is what uh, what we're hoping for. Um, early mid 2025. Um, it's a federal program, um, but the feds provide funding uh, to the state, and then it's up to each state to come up with their own program. And the state of Minnesota is very busy doing that as we speak. So, crossing our fingers that that'll be rolled out uh, here in the next several months. And so this one is uh, for specifically for uh, for appliances, as as the name implies. And uh, you can see what the maximum rebate am amount is for uh, these these example um, appliances that we have on the screen today. If your area median income is eighty percent or below the AMI. You qualify for a hundred percent rebate. Uh, if it's between eighty percent and one hundred and fifty percent, that it's uh, cut in half, um, uh, uh, a fifty percent rebate. Still very, very healthy incentive. You know, uh, one point I wanted to make is that, and it may have may have stated this earlier, but um, these can be stacked. You know, you can uh, you can get a, a home rebate. Uh, 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 you can um, uh, get a utility incentive uh, tax credit uh, and uh, and and other sorts of incentives. So they're they're made to uh, stack one upon another. All right, let's talk about the AMI for a for a second. The area median income. Boy, this is a, a doozy of a, a slide here. I recognize, but I just just really wanted to point out here that the AMI, the area median income, it matters where you live, uh, the area, and um, and so I just mentioned the specific percentages. Um, for the appliance rebate is uh, you get a 100% rebate if you're under 80% AMI um, or a 50% rebate if you're between 80 and 150% AMI. So let's just say you live in Aiken County and your household size is four people. Um, uh, this chart will show that your income to get a hundred percent rebate um, uh, needs to be seventy thousand five hundred fifty or lower, or if it's between that number and one hundred thirty two thousand three hundred, then that's a fifty percent rebate in Aiken County, uh, and that changes, of course, based on what county you're living. You live in, uh, and so we have this chart available. Um, uh, this chart, I, I should say, this chart is available on the Minnesota Department of Commerce website. 
And uh, uh, it's just a, a really helpful handy tool um, to find what that AMI, that area median income is. So I, I did mention this is the, the process that the state is going through to get these rebates um, approved, uh, created. I mentioned that it's a, it's federal funds um, uh, that uh, go to each of the individual states. States have to come up with a plan. They need to get approval from the feds on each one of those plans. There's been a lot of stakeholder engagement. I'm sure there will continue to be stakeholder engagement on what these rebate programs look like in Minnesota uh, with the intent that they will be rolled out um, certainly by this time next year. All right, so we've been talking about some federal and state incentives, um, but gosh, again, uh, I'll circle back to where I started. I always check with your local utility um, on what sort of rebates they, they have in place and incentives that they have in place. Um, I'll also say that there are several cities that have their own incentive programs, both for energy efficiency projects and solar projects, Minneapolis being uh, uh, a good example of that, but there are uh, others out there that have uh, incentive programs um, for these types of projects. So uh, check with your city uh, as well to see if, if they have incentives uh, along with your local utility. So another great resource is um, uh, called Rewiring America. Um, and uh, they have a really handy guide on uh, this legislation that I mentioned past a couple of years ago where, that uh, has bolstered a lot of the initiatives that I've been talking about, the Inflation Reduction Act. They have a IRA, Inflation Reduction Act guide. Uh, and then they have a calculator online that I use regularly when I'm thinking about my own energy efficiency improvements. Uh, this calculator, you can put in your address so it knows what your the AMI is, area median income. And uh, you drop in some other basic information, you hit enter, and it kicks out different incentives that you um, qualify for. So it's a, it's a really helpful tool. Um, and so even though these rebates, not all of them are available right now, I, I really encourage you to to start planning, to start thinking about ahead about, about your own home, uh, what, what needs to be accomplished in your own home. And I mentioned there's an annual cap on the energy efficiency tax credit. So you could be thinking about, well, next year I'm gonna be, I'll do this. This year I'll do this. Next year I'll do that. Following year I'll do this other thing. And really just maximize your, your tax credit and, and rebates. Well, I will tell you the the feds have been busy, but gosh, the state legislature has been busy as well uh, with their own um, whole host of state clean energy incentives. Um, so we have things like electric vehicle rebates, two thousand five hundred dollars for a, a new. EV, $600 for a used EV. This rolled out um, uh, earlier this year and, and uh, was, was very popular right from the get-go. Uh, a heat pump rebate program, $4,000 a state incentive. This is on top of, again, you can stack these things. This is on top of the, uh, the federal rebates. Um, and uh, uh, there's a there's a great incentive, something I need to do, uh, a residential electrical panel upgrade. If we're talking of electrify everything is the is the phrase that people use. And so if we're electrifying everything, that means that our electrical panels 
maybe maybe in need of an upgrade as well. So the state is uh, providing a healthy incentive for that. And then on-site energy storage systems uh, installation incentives. This one is uh, brand new. In fact, it just got rolled out um, just this month, I believe. And uh, for energy storage, uh, up to fi uh, uh, 50 kWh uh, paired with solar. It has to be has to be paired with uh, solar. And uh, the caps are um, uh, uh, seven thousand uh, dollars for um, for an energy storage, unless you're low income um, or uh, income qualified is the the term that they use. Uh, in which case, it can be more than double than that uh, fifteen thousand um, dollar incentive for energy storage. There's different programs. There's one in Excel territory. They're managing their own. And then there's a Department of Commerce um, program, which is managing everywhere else. All right. Just uh, as I mentioned at the outset, um, I just want to provide a really high level overview for um, incentives for businesses and for non-tax paying ent entities, whether that's a nonprofit or a city, county, schools. Um, can't forget about those folks. And boy, there are some great incentives out there. Again, thanks in large part uh, to the Inflation Reduction Act, which passed a couple of years ago. One is REAP. This one's been on the books for a long time. Uh, Rural Energy for America program, or REAP. I used to love talking about REAP because it was a 25% grant for businesses, for farms uh, in rural America, uh, which is um, population 50,000 or less. And the Inflation Reduction Act changed that. It said it could be up to a 50% grant uh, that provides uh, uh, loans as well. So it went from 25% grant to a 50% grant for a solar project or an energy efficiency project at a business, um, at businesses or farms in uh, in greater Minnesota. Um, so that's out there. There's one called 179D, uh, Energy Efficient Commercial Buildings. This is a deduction, not a tax credit. It's a deduction. It's based on square footage of the building um, and also based on the energy savings. Uh, again, the Inflation Reduction Act boosted this tax deduction from uh, I think I think it was a buck eighty eight right around there to upwards of five dollars uh, tax deduction based on square footage. Um, so the more energy savings, uh, the greater that tax deduction. And they expanded it so that non non tax paying entities, nonprofits that don't pay taxes, uh, cities, counties, schools could allocate that deduction to a designer, um, an architect, an engineer, and uh, and hopefully um, uh, lower the total cost of the project because of that allocation. So we've talked about solar tax credits uh, already a little bit for residential. Again, uh, it's been available for businesses uh, for quite a while. Um, but similar to on the residential side, they, they capped it at 30%, um, but also they put in place what are called adders. And so 30% is the minimum tax credit. But if you do certain things or, or if the project is located in certain areas, then these adders come into play. So if it's, um, so for example, for your project, if you use domestic content made in America, uh, then there could be, a, and there's a 10% added for that. So that 30% goes to 40% tax credit. If you're located in a energy community, and that's defined as a, a, on a brownfield site or a community with high fossil fuel employment or a closed coal-fired power plant, that is, again, a 
10% adder. Again, that 30% goes to 40%, um, but, and there's more uh, additional adders. And so, and these adders stack on top of one another. So that 30% could go to 40%, could go to 50%, even 60 or 70% in the right scenarios. Um, so, uh, so, so this tax credit's been available for businesses for a long time, farms, businesses. But what about nonprofits or non-tax paying entities? Cities, counting schools, the food shelf, the Catholic church, don't pay taxes, have not uh, been able to tap into the tax credit. So the Inflation Reduction Act put in place what's called elective pay. It's also called direct pay. They mean, you'll see both, they mean the same thing, elective pay and or direct pay. And that is a direct payment from Uncle Sam to that non-tax paying entity uh, for doing these types of renewable energy projects. Could be solar, could be wind, geothermal, uh, combined heat and power, things of that nature. Uh, it's a direct payment from Uncle Sam uh, for, again, minimum 30%, but potentially much more with these adders. That's very exciting. That's a really a game changer for these non-tax paying entities. We would love to hear what you think uh, about uh, about uh, these types of webinars, about the Community, community Energy Ambassador uh, program. And gosh, we really love to track uh, what you've been up to. How, how have you as, uh, as ambassadors been able to uh, uh, utilize this information that we're sharing? And so, um, we've got uh, what we call a Z-Link, uh, a little handy-dandy uh, link that um, uh, that you can utilize. And, and we'll be sharing these slides, um, so uh, you can you can use that and uh, or hold up your phone and um, and we've got that QR code that'll take you to this uh, place where you can provide this webinar feedback and. Um, and certification, certification, I uh, love that term, um, tracking for, for community, community energy ambassadors. And that's me. Gosh, if you have any uh, questions about this, um, ask away now for certain, but um, if uh, something uh, comes to mind at a later date, uh, please send your questions. My way, and we got a lot of great information online as well as on, on our website, which this QR code will take you right there. And, uh, and so check that out as well. I'm gonna stop sharing my screen so I can see your smiling faces. And, uh, And yeah, happy to answer any questions that you may have, or at least take a crack at it. We do have some questions in the chat, some of which I think you've already answered, but even so, I'll go ahead and ask them if that's okay. Um, 3KW in capacity, do, do you mean there's a minimum of 3KW in order to apply? I think I that, that from uh, solar storage, yeah, that's the maximum size of the solar storage is my understanding. Then there was a general question about, can people find these programs right now? I know you talked about a lot of things, maybe just a reminder of what is ready to go and what is coming online soon. Yeah, uh, so yeah, thanks. Uh, and I should have made a point of that. Uh, the tax credits available right now. That energy efficient tax credit available right now. The solar tax credit available right now, uh, and um, and uh, the homes and here rebates um, coming in twenty twenty five. Thanks, Laura, who I'm pretty sure I met recently, who works for the Department of Commerce. Thanks, Laura. Uh, said just real quick qualifying thing that um, while the commerce program started in August, the Excel managed battery storage program hasn't been rolled out yet. So 
Very good. Um, Very helpful. Thank you. Someone asks, can the rebates be paid directly to installers versus reimbursed after the purchase? Oh, the rebates, uh, my understanding will be point of sale rebates. I should have made that point as well. So you go to uh, your local uh, hardware store or uh, appliance store and you qualify for the rebates. Um, it should be a, a point of sale uh, rebate. And if Laura uh, from the Department of Commerce, if, if feel free to uh, take yourself off mute if you have additional information on, on any of these things. Not to put you on the spot or anything. <laughs> and then quick suggestion about homes and here rebates, whether or not they can be combined with each other. They cannot, two separate things. Those are the, um, if people have other questions, they're welcome to put them in the chat. Um, you can unmute also. Another question, for people that are using tax credits and tax deductions, can all of these, or just some, be used over multiple years for larger projects? Um, oh gosh, uh, I know that they're non-refundable. We'll say that. So if you have a, if you have a thousand dollar tax credit, but you only owe $600 to the feds, for example, um, uh, you're not going to get a check for $400. You, your liability will dr be dropped to zero. Um, the carry forward, I, um, I'd have to get back to you on that. I don't think so. Um, but, uh, for solar, solar and storage. Yeah. I was just thinking that solar and storage can be rolled over. Um, uh, thank you, Tim. Yeah. Um, but Tim, do you know about the energy efficiency? I, I, I'm a little, I'm not, don't, I'm not sure the energy efficiency one can. Sounds like no, the energy efficiency one cannot. Okay, there we go. Energy efficiency, no ro rollover, solar, two thumbs up. Another very specific question. Does a heat pump dryer with a front load washer qualify? Uh, I imagine so. Um, a great resource for all things heat pump related is the, um, it's called it, yeah, there, uh, the collaborative air source heat pump collaborative. Shailen may have just dropped it into the, into the chat there. And, uh, boy, any sort of heat pump related questions, links to installers, um, uh, tax related information. That's a great source of of info, air source heat pump collaborative. I have a question regarding the funding. Is the are the tax credits for your income in twenty five or would it be for twenty four? And who determines your income at point of sale, as to whether you pay? you know, 50% or 20%? Well, I think on the latter part, latter, latter uh, question, I think that's what the State Department of Commerce is uh, coming up with right as we speak. It's, how do they know uh, if you go to Home Depot and you buy that um, water heater, how, how do they know uh, at the uh, point of sale that what your income is and um, so I'm, I don't have an answer for that. I'm not sure anybody has an exact answer on that quite yet. Um, uh, yeah. Um, so that's a work in progress. Um, and then your first question was tax credit. In, is it income for 2024? 
or 2025? I'm not sure I fully understand. Do you mind uh, saying that again? Yes, if I um, do my taxes for 24 and then I buy a, a heat pump in 25, is is the income based on my 24 or do I have to wait to find out what my 25 income is? Because my income varies. So, so I, the question is, on what annual income are the tax rebates based on? I, I imagine it'd be your last annual income, if okay. I'm understanding the, the, the question correctly. Yes, I um, I need to know. I, I was hoping that the, the tax credits would be available in 24, so I could use my 23 income. But if they're not available till 25, I don't know what my 24 income will, will be. We have uh, another question too. Is there a place to look at how property owners can create a strategy to get multiple projects done? For example, wiring plus insulation plus doors and windows all at the same time while all of the contractors are on the job and maximize the funding help with these programs. Boy, um, I am not positive. Uh, actually, I'll I'll call out Shailen. Are are you aware, Shailen, of any sort of one stop shop for um, for something like that? Maybe maybe rewiring America would be a good um, a good yeah. spot to go. Rewiring America is a good spot to. They have a lot of workbooks that you can download. Um, one thing that that we've been working on. We have a home energy guide webpage that is um, undergoing a zhuzh, if you will. But for the mm -hmm. time being, we have a chart. Um, it's like a little lower down on the page and it just kind of talks through like, you know, kind of do an inventory of what's in your home. Like kind of like just track, like how will, like, do you have a hot water heater? When did you buy it or when was it installed and like what's the average age for hot water heaters there's we have links to where you can find all that out and then you can kind of put together this big plan of like when your you'll need to do upgrades so that you can you know money set aside and save you can do your research and figure out what you need to do um and then other than that it's really like looking at our I think our guide to the Inflation Reduction Act, which Pete has linked to a lot in our in his presentation, we try to really like organize the the clean energy incentives that are available by how somebody would um, like qualify for them. So like if you're a resident versus a business versus um, a non tax paying entity, and so you can just kind of look through and. Um, we would love to create a really great planning <laughs> tool for you and and hopefully we'll have time to do something. But um, I think just look at your highest priority projects and then figure out how to map it out. But I think I'm going to stop rambling. I'm starting to ramble now. Um, I think uh, Rewiring America has some good guides. Um, also, Pete, since, since I was pulled out of my non-video... Mm -hmm. <laughs> um, I believe there was a little back and forth about the on-site storage, um, maximum or minimum capacity. And I was looking it up and Tim was right. It's a minimum of three kilowatt hours. Oh, thank you. So Great just, clarification. Uh, um, but yeah, signing off. Today's word for the day is zhuzh. Shailen, how do you spell, how do you spell zhuzh? Oh, she even put it in the chat. My goodness, wow. look at that. That, Tim looks also, like a, that looks like a good wordle word. Tim <laughs> had another good point, which was that there are annual limits on the tax credits, as you mentioned, Pete. And so therefore, you wouldn't want to do them all at once. Plus, the rebates are probably going to run out quick. Uh, seems like a fair thing to, um, to say. Any other questions people can add in the chat or unmute themselves? Hopefully the fact that they run out quick is a good indicator to legislators that they should be refunded. And Annika put in the chat, thank you, Annika, uh, Rewiring America's website for personal electrification planner, the precise little link there. So thank you.
And of course, if you get an energy audit for your home, that is a, a plan in and of itself on, on what you need to be doing in your own home or what you can be doing. Well, if there aren't any more questions, we uh, just a reminder, we would love to get your thoughts. So I'm gonna once again, put in the little chatters as I like to say, um, a link to the survey. Please let us know what you thought. And again, a reminder, it's going to ask you which webinar you attended. This is paying for your project. Um, and then you can get access to more webinars like this um, through our website. And again, this is part of our series uh, for CERT's Community Energy Ambassadors. So Pete, any last words of wisdom before we part today? Well, thank you very much again. Uh, get out there, help us spread the word about all these great opportunities. And uh, again, don't be a stranger and uh, I, uh, really emphasize the, the tracking part of this. We really do uh, like to know how these tools are used across the state and uh, don't, don't hesitate to reach out at any time. Thanks so much for being here, everyone. Bye-bye. Have a great day.